Welcome to this edition of Abled and On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I'm always your host, Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. And on this interesting program, we will um, focus on new directions, um, which we will talk about in a minute. But first, uh, recently, Abled and On Air was at uh, Good Samaritan Haven in Barrie. And uh, Froggy FM was there, and uh, there was a broadcast and a fundraiser, which, uh, good, which good Samaritan raised funds, as well as uh, Green Mountain Transit, which is in, uh, which is in uh, Vermont, um, gave 500, uh, and as you can see from the video here, uh, gave 500 bus passes to people at Good Samaritan Haven to use to go on job interviews and other appointments. But uh, right now, we are also going to talk about the Poor People's Campaign, which has been in um, at the State House for the last uh, six weeks, and uh, we have video of that. Let's take a look at this. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Come on, you guys can do better than that. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> Welcome to the Poor People's Campaign. Uh, for the last couple of weeks, I've been here taping uh, through Orca Media. I'm a journalist, and my wife and I, um, thanks to Orca Media, host and produce a television program for people with special needs called Abled and On Air, the program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently abled, not disabled. Yeah. Uh, but um, we don't suffer with disabilities. We're abled people. Yeah, there you go. Uh, in 1964, these are facts. In 1964, President Kennedy signed the Act for Mental Retardation and Mental Health Services um, for people. We don't want to get rid of those services. We need them. Okay? Why is it that people in certain states have to wait for hospital care and not one hour, but they have to remain in the hospital for about 15 or more hours? That's immoral. That's immoral. Why is it that we in the state of Vermont have to pay for co-pays for Medicare and Medicaid? Why is it that people sometimes have to go to other countries like Israel for free health care? Why can't the United States give us free health care? We want free health care. Let's say it. We want free health care. We want free health care. Why is it that Social Security, when you pass away, doesn't give your family enough death benefit and you have to pay thousands of dollars for a funeral? Why? That's immoral. Why is it that disabled veterans are homeless when they come home from their, uh, um, from helping the United States? Why is it that disabled veterans are also hungry? Why is it that people like my wife, who is a survivor of the World Trade Center, who survived 68 flights, why is it that people who survived the World Trade Center who cannot get their compensation because of the fact that the World Trade Center Compensation Fund said they have to wait for first responders first? That's a shame. And the last several other things here. Why is it that President Trump, who is supposed to be our president, 
still mocks people with disabilities. And yeah, and why is it that we are, um, during the national anthem, they say that we are the land of the free and the home of the brave. We still live in a slavery state. Let's repeat, we still live in a slavery state. Give us what we need. Thank you. Well, today on Able Then On Air, we are focusing on new directions of Montpelier, which deals with substance abuse, uh, tobacco, and other substances. We would like to welcome uh, the director of New Directions, and. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, on, Larry. Um, your last name is? Gilbert. Ann Gilbert mm -hmm. of New Directions, which mm -hmm. uh, the Substance Abuse Coalition here in Montpelier. Welcome to Able Then and Air. Great. Thank you, okay. Larry. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, what are the missions and goals of uh, New Directions, well, Substance Abuse Coalition? Yeah. Central Vermont New Directions Coalition is a substance abuse prevention coalition. Mm -hmm. So our mission is really to encourage healthy behavior and decrease substance abuse, especially in Washington County. Okay. When you say decrease substance abuse, mm -hmm. what exactly does that mean? Well, the key word is prevention. We really want to stop something before it starts. So we want to decrease uh, the number of kids who are starting to try cigarettes. We want to decrease the number of smokers uh, and where it's causing harm to their health. We want to lower the number of people abusing prescription drugs, and we want to limit underage drinking of alcohol. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're dealing with um, tobacco, mm -hmm. okay, uh, tobacco cessation, mm -hmm. uh, patches, mm -hmm. the um, chewing tobacco and that kind of thing, yep. Uh, because now we know that it's a federal mandate uh, to anyone that rents an apartment in a, in HUD subsidized housing yes. um, that there's going to be no smoking as of July 30th mm -hmm. or 31st. 31st. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, explain. Yeah. what you've been doing in terms of those presentations. Right, so that is a big change and um, several years ago it was optional. So some public housing units started to go smoke free or tobacco free over the years and uh, now you're right, it is a requirement. So New Directions has funding, uh, some grant funding through the Vermont Department of Health to really assist with this initiative. So the Department of Health um, and 802 Quits has put out a smoke-free housing toolkit, mm -hmm. which really helps. Um, it's a whole booklet. It is. And what it has in there is, are, are the reasons why, you know, because of uh, to limit fires and burns and uh, decrease the cost of um, having to redo an apartment from all the um, problems, and especially the secondhand smoke. Um, what do you mean redo an apartment mm -hmm. from all the problems? Explain some of that. Right. So secondhand smoke, which uh, you know comes off of the um, lit end of a, a cigarette, gets into the air, and thirdhand smoke actually settles in the walls, on the floor, in the linoleum, um, in the drapes. Mm -hmm. So all of those things uh, add toxic layers to mm -hmm. inside of an apartment, mm -hmm. there could be sticky t nicotine residue. So when an apartment is turned over, there has to be a lot of repainting and cleaning and sanding or repurchasing um, uh, new carpeting uh, in order to make that happen, which is much more expensive than if uh, there was a non-smoker there. We, we also know that there's no safe level of secondhand smoke, and it gets into the HVAC system, and so people in all the apartments can are breathing that same air and sometimes those toxins that come with secondhand smoke. Mm -hmm. Did yeah. you want to ask a question? Hmm? Did you want to ask a question? Yeah, how does... Um, the reaction is going to stop people from smoking and how they get in the Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we do want to promote cessation, mm -hmm. um, and so it, it's not just 
about the smoker. It's really just about the smoke, and we really want to help people um, well, obviously with this you challenge. Can't stop someone from completely. Can you stop someone? Can New Direction stop someone from completely smoking? Well, we partner with Central Vermont Hospital that has a program called um, 802 Quits. Mm -hmm. And 802 Quits provides, when you sign up for this, you can get phone support or online, or you can attend a group meeting. And so there can even be a meeting at every of the public housing um, uh, areas. And you can get uh, free patches, uh, gum, lozenges. Those are all aids in assisting people to stop smoking. Um, and sometimes it doesn't take just once or twice. It may take several times. And so I just wanted to encourage people who have tried to smoke and said, oh, I started again, to try again. Because every try counts. And, um, and it is very difficult to break the habit. Uh, in terms of some of the other um, situations, like, OK, you said that um, secondhand smoke gets on a carpet it, yeah. and HUD or any apartment dwelling has to pay extra mm -hmm. money. I've also heard that it's gotten into appliances mm -hmm. like stoves, refrigerators, mm -hmm. lighting. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. ex can you explain some of that? Like how expensive can it really get for secondhand smoke to get to get into an apartment. I you're, mean, you're right, far. Larry. You know, to replace appliances or lighting is very, very costly. So it could cost thousands and thousands of dollars. And you know, a lot of the housing authorities really want to be able to keep the People prices down. People lose their security deposit because of this problem. They do. They do. And so that's why we're trying to, you know, I mean, now that we know, now that the Surgeon General has said there's no safe level of secondhand smoke and we see the evidence of, um, you know, fires and illnesses and having to redo uh, the apartments, it, it, it's time to make a move that will really be mm -hmm. more healthy for all the residents in the long run. Okay. Let's talk about tobacco companies for a minute. Okay. Um, in terms of Philip Morris uh -huh. and others, uh, some years back there was a uh, a huge PSA, uh, a public service announcement situation because these companies have gotten sued mm -hmm. for lying mm -hmm. to consumers mm -hmm. in terms mm -hmm. of smoke, oh it's wonderful, it's great, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it, co it costs a lot of money for a carton of cigarettes these days, mm -hmm. half your rent. Mm -hmm. um, explain that situation and how mm -hmm. your company, your nonprofit mm -hmm. basically mm -hmm. helps with smoking cessation in right. terms of that whole thing. Why, uh, why did they lie to consumers? Yeah. You know, big tobacco is very, very powerful. And they continue, even though it's been going on for years and years, um, they continue to tell lies or not tell the whole truth about a lot of the products mm -hmm. and about the harmful effects of smoking um, and the secondhand smoke. Um, and uh, they've, they've really skirted um, the issues in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. and we're concerned about that. Right mm -hmm. now, um, there, there are a lot of electronic cigarettes mm -hmm. and vape pens um, and jewels and rubies, which are vaping um, devices, which do not fall under the same legislation as regular cigarettes. Mm -hmm. And so we really need to get more legislation around those so that they are taxed heavily. Um, the, you know, there are a lot of flavors in tobaccos now. So there's even, I just wanted to show you these. We, Grape, orange, and wow. there are strawberry. Almost, there are almost 7,000 different flavors of wow. different tobacco products and nicotine liquid. And one of the reasons Big Tobacco is really putting a lot of flavors into these products and not telling the whole truth is because so many of their customers are dying off. So what do they need to do? They need to make more customers. Yeah. And they know that they can target kids. If they put signs on doors that are at eye level is by level, you know, Joe Camel stickers used to be about three feet off the ground 
when you walked into a convenience store. Now, luckily, there are a lot more rules about what kind of signage there can be. But when I was growing up, there were jingles on the radio and TV all the time. There were billboards. There were ads. Um, and now they, they're not allowed to do that. But what we're really hoping is that um, the uh, cigarettes will be taxed even more, that they'll raise the age of purchase to 21. We call that Tobacco 21, yeah. so that we can keep people from starting and they won't be saddled with this habit. The, the, um, yeah, the other expensive habit. It's expensive. The other products, yeah. mm -hmm. and, and you know, it's First Amendment speech, so we can mm -hmm. mention. Like the for the other products like Skull, yeah. uh, which is the chewing tobacco, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, cartons of cigarettes cost yeah. a lot of money. Yes, a hundred to two hundred dollars a a carton, depending on the brand. Mm -hmm. But this stuff causes mouth cancer. Yep. Uh, uh, you can uh, throat cancer. I mean, Any we have family cancer? members that died of cancer. You know, so throat it, cancer, lung cancer, you know, it causes it, a it, lot. It, it's it Even brain emphysema. Cancer, right. Birth, oh, another thing I want to talk about, birth defects. Yeah. How does that, I mean, there's, on, there's another agency, March of Dimes, yeah. that deals with birth defects. How does yeah. smoking really increase birth defects? Yeah, we're really, really trying to help more people be aware of the harms and have the skills to quit smoking and really take action. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, the harms for women who are pregnant, whether they're smoking tobacco or um, tobacco products like vaping or chew marijuana or even marijuana, marijuana, it's all harmful to the developing fetus. Yeah, I mean, the, even the, the, to the baby. Well, if it's, it's harmful, baby, yeah. it's harmful. It's if it's too. harmful to the developing fetus, mm -hmm. then why are they making marijuana legal? That's a good question. You know, there, um, we, we know that there really needs to be a, a lot more prevention education and public awareness about the harms of tobacco, about marijuana. It's not for everybody, certainly not for kids and teens while their mm -hmm. brains are still developing. Um, and, and especially, it can cause, I'm, originally, yeah. I'm originally from the Bronx, yeah. okay? Yeah. Um, my wife's story is from Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. We're talking about 1970s, 1980s mm -hmm. here. Crack, crack pipes, crack smoke, mm -hmm. all of that stuff is, is, is just, you know, there's something in the 70s, the Bronx is burning, right? People were smoking crack and doing drugs and, yeah. and all that other stuff. Yeah. You're talking about so much harm to a person's body. Right. It, it's just, now, vaping. Yeah. yeah. How does that come into play? Why is that considered, I mean, not really smoke in terms of like um, versus tobacco smoke in, right. in an apartment building? Right. Why is that considered safe versus? Well, actually, the, the vaping is not safe either. There are a lot of things we don't yet know about it, but what we do know are a number of the chemicals that are in vape pens or vape, vaping devices um, are also in combustible, uh, like cigarettes, tobaccos. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, these are things like formaldehyde or, you know, um, dry cleaning room. fluid. Yeah, <laughs> lots, um, lots of things that are harmful. Whiteouts. Um, yeah. Uh, I took culinary classes and we, uh -huh. we had to bring a Sharpie pen to class. Mm -hmm. So, to underline. Yeah. Stuff. So Sharpie pens and those yeah. vapor, vapors are, right. are harmful to people. Right. There's toxicity in that. and Lead paints. Well, yeah. you, you know, lead paint is a good point because Am a lot of... Am I making no, but a lot of here? no, but a lot of people say, well, you know, why, why, do, why does our housing have to be smoke-free? Mm -hmm. It's because we know so much more now than we used to know. Mm -hmm. For instance, lead paint. We don't use lead paint anymore. That's no. not allowed in any of your housing because no. we know how toxic that can be. They're and so toxic. now that we know so much more they about don't even the have chemicals. lead pencils too much anymore. Yeah. I remember mm -hmm. when I was a kid, if I got nervous, yeah. I would chew a pencil. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah. you know, they don't do that anymore. No, um, no, no. Toxic. They don't. Yeah. Right. And um, 
so the the vaping, the electronic cigarettes, is still a form of um, a tobacco e substitute. Mm -hmm. Electronic cigarettes, and those what are do not they do? safe. Plug them either. into the wall and smoke. Well, they plug they plug them into their computer uh, to recharge them. It has a battery um, on it, and then they they can, and then. They it's can a just battery. Use it's it. an actual battery you plug yes. into your computer. That will heat the small. coil. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It doesn't have to be plugged in in order to vape. So it, yeah. it's very concealable. It could just be in your hand. It doesn't have that same odor as a lot of regular cigarettes. Okay, I'm plugging in a cigarette now. <laughs> but you there's know, lots it, of flavors it, involved in those, which are it, are very it, toxic. And there's lot. There have been a lot of um, nicotine poisonings, especially among children and youth. Mm -hmm. uh, from these little bottles uh, that, that come of the, the liquid. Mm -hmm. And so there, is, uh, there are laws now that they have to be marked with how much nicotine is in them, and they have to have a child-proof cap. Mm -hmm. However, the FDA is not regulating all of those chemicals the same way mm -hmm. they do with other things. And in fact, some of the additives mm -hmm. in vaping have been approved for ingestion, like those flavors might be okay if it was in candy, but they were never intended to be heated and inhaled. Candy, cigarettes, I remember those. Oh, right, yep, yep. yep. And as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. uh, back in the early 60s, 70s, mm -hmm. Winston cigarettes, mm -hmm. um, we might show a piece of that. Um, mm -hmm. Winston cigarettes and the Flintstones. There was an old oh. commercial mm -hmm. with the Flintstones. Wait, Winston cigarettes, you know, mm -hmm. taste great. It's the same, and, and yeah. same thing like Bush beer. I know yeah. this is, yeah. you know, about smoking and mm -hmm. other harmful. But Flintstones did a Bush beer commercial. Wow. You're you're playing right into children. You are. You are. That's really true. Mm -hmm. And the more that there are bright colors and fancy flavors, and so actually we have. Uh, several groups at a number of schools that are funded to be part of the counterbalance campaign. Mm -hmm. And counterbalance is they're going to counter the advertising mm -hmm. that big tobacco is putting out there of, you know, having flavors in lots of different chew and tobacco and really just to lure kids. Because what we know now from surveys is that kids who not, would not normally have smoked cigarettes do try some of these products only because of the flavors like bubble gum or or even the idea of a flavor like fancy unicorn i mean what does that taste like but people think oh i'm going to get or, i'm going to um, get that flavor or ice cream yes or yeah cotton candy ice cream or something like yep. that yeah creme brulee mm -hmm. yeah yeah interesting yeah. but disgusting mm -hmm. yeah um no creme brulee is a good food but <laughs> not right. in a cigarette right. you know uh, even though I you use a blowtorch so. to to cook it right at the end, yeah. but I wouldn't um, think so. Yeah. Mm. But anyway, um, let's get to um, mm -hmm. the other programs that mm -hmm. you guys have. Mm -hmm. Trash tramps, for example. Oh, okay. Exact. Uh, let's. Um, what exactly is trash tramps? Trash tramps. And I noticed That's you great. have a. Oh yeah, I brought a, a couple a, things to show you. That's right. So. We did a survey with some student interns a few mm -hmm. summers ago all around Montpelier to pedestrians and we surveyed um, uh, store owners to see if, they, if smoking was bothersome at, at their stores or on the streets and would they like to have a smoke-free zone. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, cigarette smoke was bothersome. People were concerned about where people would go and smoke. But the number one thing was the cigarette butts were a real problem in Montpelier. Mm -hmm. So Central Vermont New Directions Coalition partnered. Because Montpelier doesn't really have a sanitation department. And it gets all nasty with garbage and other well, stuff. Well, yeah. So a, lo a lot of the trash does get picked up. But who wants to pick up all the cigarette butts? So here's where the trash tramps come in. And they're volunteers from the Montpelier Area uh, Senior Activity Center. And so we partnered with them and with Montpelier Alive and with Central Vermont Solid Waste District to purchase these sidewalk butlers. Now these are made by a man in Portland, Maine, and they have these in Maine, and now they have them in a lot of other cities. So we started with six, 
and then we were able to get 10 more and some kids in Barrie even purchased 10 to put up in downtown Barrie. Mm. So we have our logos on here. We want to let people know that we're recycling the cigarette butts. How New much directions. do they cost? They purchase? cost about $99. But that doesn't include emptying. So who's going to empty these? So the trash tramps get together every Tuesday afternoon from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock. And anyone can join. They meet at the Cedar Center. And they go around and they pick up trash on the streets with tongs. And they, um, they have a master key that unlocks these and empties the cigarette butts, which all get recycled. But what we're finding mm -hmm. is that they're picking up about 2,000 cigarette butts every Tuesday, sometimes mm -hmm. more than that, even with these. So mm -hmm. what we really need to do is promote the use of these, either through the tourist center or smokers on the street. Please don't throw it on the ground or in the tree uh, grates or down the sewer that goes right to the river. There's no filter in there. Put, put them right in the sidewalk butler. And you'll see these on signs around, um, you know, signposts around State Street, Main Street. And we put them wherever we found big piles of cigarette butts in the past. But we're ready to install some more. Um, yeah. So you can purchase those, or, mm -hmm. so, or a group can purchase those to combat smoking. Yes. Right. We, we really want to have cigarette receptacles. We want to try to get people out of the habit of just throwing them on the ground. You know, people don't throw their coffee cup down or their, their empty bag from their chips. But for some reason, uh, cigarette butts get thrown on the ground or in the river or something. And we really want to try to change that culture. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, now, how long has New Directions been around? Well, since 1998, um, I'll tell you that there was a very unfortunate, tragic, alcohol-related car crash. Mm -hmm. Two Montpelier High School students were killed mm. in East Montpelier coming home from a party in Adamant that was hosted by two Necky students. So you can see that there were four or more communities um, involved in this. Uh, it was an underage drinking party. And um, when these uh, two boys died, a lot of the people in the community came together and said, we cannot let this happen again. So- Was this similar? Well, is this group, is your group similar to, because there's been other groups like Mothers Against Drug Driving yeah. and uh, yeah. Students Against Drug Driving. Right. So is it We, we partner with those other organizations, but it's not just on underage drinking anymore because what we see is there are so many substances and youth are very Tobacco, vulnerable. Tobacco, drugs, yeah. Tobacco, uh, vaping, marijuana, underage drinking. Binge drinking, which is drinking four or five drinks at a time, you know, within a two-hour period. In a frat house or hazing when they do all of that stuff. Yeah, and so. even, even other underage parties, kids mm -hmm. drink too much at one time and they don't understand the harmful effects going on in their body. Yeah. And we're very concerned about prescription drugs now also, and I'd Opioids. like to tell you about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. how exactly does your organization help with that? Well, one of the things that we found, Larry and Arlene, is that most of the people who were um, using prescription drugs that were not prescribed to them Ex were not example, stealing them. Example, what do you mean by the difference between prescription and unprescribed or not Okay, so prescription drugs like painkillers, something very strong, something that's not just an over-the-counter. Oxy Oxycontin. Oxycontin, yes, absolutely. Which for years Percocet, has, yep. been, mm -hmm. has been off the market because of situations people would eat them like candy. Too much misuse and not enough warning on mm -hmm. that. So in Vermont, um, we have a prescription monitoring system. Mm -hmm. So it's not easy for people to get, you know, too many, too many pills from a lot of different pharmacies. And um, doctors are prescribing very low doses or offering alternatives, maybe going to a chiropractor or trying some other alternative method of acupuncture or something else to manage pain. But what we do know is that 
there's still a lot of misuse because people are getting them from families and friends. And when we think about crime, sometimes it's because people have broken into someone's home or their car to get prescription drugs. So our one main issue right now in working with the health department is to get prescription drugs out of people's homes. So if you had a shoulder injury or your kid had uh, their wisdom teeth taken out and you still have those drugs, don't keep them around for if you might need them someday. We're really encouraging people to get rid of them and a number of ways to do that. We call them Vermont's most dangerous leftovers. And so we really want to promote. That's why police are getting involved uh, and they have commercials on TV or PSAs. Um, the Montpelier Police Department is hosting a drug take-back day yes. or something like that. Yes. And you bring your unused medication yes. to them or any any of the drop-off centers yes. and they'll take your medication. Exactly. What do they I'm do with that? Well, I'm like, glad you've heard about that. How do they down the garbage? How, how do they? No, they, they get um, picked up. So this is what, what are the drop boxes look like. And here in Washington County, um, this was we on, have, that's on Facebook or is it on? Yes, yeah. Um, here in Washington County, we now have a drop box in every police station and at the Washington County Sheriff's Office. So you can walk right into the police station and um, get rid of your old drugs. If you can't do that, you want to do a little spring cleaning. Twice a year, there's a drug take-back day, like you said. That happened in April. April and every October. And we publicize this because the mm -hmm. law enforcement locally, um, they monitor different areas and mm -hmm. people can come and drop off all their drugs and then they get picked up uh, by the National Guard and they're taken to be incinerated. Now, if neither of those work, we certainly don't want anybody flushing them down the toilet or throwing them in the what compost. What happens when you do that? Well, it goes into the water supply and, um, you know, there can be levels of drugs uh, in the water, and we don't want that. So another option that we have are we now have mm -hmm. mailers, and we're putting up these displays at a number of places around town um, so you can mail in your unused medication. Mm. So if it's not convenient for you to get to the police station or wait till take-back day, you can go to the library or your doctor's office and pick up one of these envelopes. It's postage paid. All you have to do is put your, you know, cross off your name on the prescription bottle, stick it right in, seal it up, and take it to the post office or put it in the mailbox, and that will get no, no charge to mm -hmm. you. But we're just really making every effort to get all drugs out of people's homes right now. So they're not just sitting around um, for to fall into the wrong hands. Any more questions? Any questions you want to ask? No. Sure. Um, what uh, What are the new things that New Directions is doing um, in terms of how can I say um, you know new things that are happening or or in the future? What does it hold for New Directions in the future? Well. We're really focused on prevention, and we really want to help people understand that um, a lot of substance abuse uh, disorders can be prevented. You know, there's a lot of focus on treatment mm -hmm. and recovery, which are both so important, but mm -hmm. we're trying to back it up and, you know, stop it before it even starts. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we find is really, really important is to uh, teach a parenting class called Guiding Good Choices. And this is a course. Can you hold that a little bit more? Sure. Oh. I lost your mic, yeah. So just a book. Yeah, so this is a workbook that the parents get. And we pull parents together for um, two hours to meet for five weeks. One of the weeks, they bring their kids with them. Mm. But it's really focused on how to have family meetings, think about what your values are in the family, um, learn about why marijuana, for instance, is very harmful to kids so the parents can make decisions and then communicate those decisions and guidelines, family rules to their kids on a regular basis and have conversations before it's too late. And it, it's really important to start talking to kids when they're, you know, 10 years old even because then they're more receptive to understanding 
the harms and the um, health problems I, down the road. Start when they're young, yeah. Yeah, start young, yeah. Mm -hmm. And continue through middle school and high school and even yeah, college. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we understand yeah. that New Directions is grant funded. Yes. Uh, it, and you told me before the show began that you guys were not funded for um, to help people to get off heroin and some other powerful drugs. Why is that? Um, I thought that drug prevention was a whole thing. You're right. Drug prevention does cover all of the substances. And one of the things that we know is some substances actually lead to other things. That's How why we, is that? Well, we don't even want kids starting to feel a high or change their brain from nicotine in something that people think is harmless, like a, a vape pen or, you know, what they call a jewel now, or even a cigarette. But, you know, it, it, many times using one substance, people are more likely to then use another substance. And, you know, when they can't have prescription drugs, they, they might move on to heroin. Now, there, we, we do carry Narcan, you know, in case there is... Uh, Narcan an is what? Narcan is uh, naloxone, which will reverse the effects of, you know, a heroin overdose, mm -hmm. for instance. And um, we're really trying to promote that in the state. So if there are family members and loved ones of people who are addicted and are using heroin, that all the family members make sure that they do have Narcan in their home so that they can save a life if there is an unfortunate overdose. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, what are the misconceptions that people have around cigarette smoking and drugs mm -hmm. that aren't necessarily, because I mean, it's not good for you, Yeah. right? Right. Um, you know, it can cause, and this program deals with, we, we deal with special needs and yes. we deal with families. And, yeah. Um, it, because you can get birth defects from it and you can get other situations from it. So what yeah. are the misconceptions that, I know that's a long-winded question, but. Yeah, well, I think, first of all, there's, um, there's a low perception of harm. There are a lot of kids oh, it's not gonna harm and you. adults <laughs> who think, you know, parents might say, well, I smoked weed, I smoked pot when I was younger, or I still like to smoke it, it's okay. But what we know is the THC, the active psychoactive mm -hmm. ingredient. What does THC stand for? Yeah, tetrahydro... Chloride. Yeah. Tetrahydrochloride, okay. <laughs> um, um, I think. Uh, the THC level in um, marijuana used to be much lower than it is now. I'm talking about used to be 3 or 5%, and now... Some of the products have 80 or 95 percent, and that's mm. way too much for a lot of people's brains, and it really is way too much for, for it's, kids. It's almost yeah. the same thing, similar, well, some, something similar. The driver's manual, any uh -huh. driver's manual, yeah. would say, what has more alcohol, a beer, mm -hmm. a, shot of, uh, a shot of whiskey, mm -hmm. or something else? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It just, it depends, but it all can cause the same harm when you get behind the wheel. It can, and the other factor that plays into that is if people have a family history of mental illness mm -hmm. or dependence on alcohol or other drugs, those kids, or even those grandkids, can be much more vulnerable and susceptible to uh, having a problem, dependence, or addiction. And kids need to know that. All people need to know what their family history is. Just the way, you know, a doctor would say, well, do you have diabetes in your family or heart disease in your family? Everybody needs to know if there is a problem with substance uh, dependence or mental illness. Um, and then they can make better choices. You know, I think when there's more knowledge, then people are better informed to be able to say, that's not good for me, or I can have one, or I can't do that right now, or, you know, uh, you know, m my, my family's allergic to that, pretty much, you know. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't work for them. And so I think getting back to, you know, your question, the perception of harm. Some, some people think, oh. What has more? Yeah. It's it, all, it, it all yeah. does the same harm, especially when you get behind a wheel. If, if, right. if marijuana smoke, you get behind a wheel, is 
uh, I mean, not marijuana smoke, uh, 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 um, alcohol. Yes. You get behind a wheel, you're going to kill somebody. Well, alcohol is very dangerous. You know, don't drink and drive. Don't drive and drink, you know. But um, the, the marijuana impairment is a really big deal. And that's why one of the reasons that New Directions was promoting, let's wait until we have this figured out. We're wa we were watching Colorado and Washington State, who had legalized before us, how are you going to handle, you know, the the driving problems with impairment? And it is a big problem. Because there's and something I'm really called, about that. and a lot of people don't realize, vehicular homicide. You get behind the yeah. wheel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you kill somebody. Mm -hmm. And it's compounded if someone uses marijuana and they have a drink or they have a, a, a pill in their system. All of those things compounded mm -hmm. really... Um, uh, change their level of Does impairment, yep. and we're worried about that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, we would like to thank you for joining us Great. on on this um, informing episode of Ableton on Air. Uh, before we go, uh, how can people? Uh, we're going to put it on the bottom of the screen. How can people reach you? Okay. So um, you can see we're at uh, www dot cvndc dot org and that stands for Central Vermont New Directions Coalition. We have a website, we have a Facebook page, and uh, we're going to um, be at City Hall um, meeting with the uh, City Council on uh, June 27th to talk about... And we'll be there as well. Oh good. We're going to propose, we've got a petition going around right now, and we have over 1,500 signatures for people who are open to smoke-free zones, maybe parts of the sidewalk in downtown Montpelier, because there's so many people suffering from disabilities of, you know, lung problems and, um, and breathing problems. Mm -hmm. And so to eliminate secondhand smoke in our downtown public area would be helpful. Last thing before we end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Last thing before we end, restaurants. Yeah. Okay. We didn't yeah. get really get into that, but yeah. restaurants and other public places. Yes. Um, smoking, non-smoking. Why did they start the trend of a smoke-free restaurant or casino or yeah. a smoke-free place? Well, you know, when surveyed, most people would prefer to be in a smoke-free environment mm -hmm. um, because they they appreciate breathing clean air. Um, sometimes because if they're not around smoke, which triggers them to have a cigarette, it helps them cut down or quit. And um, then there, and then it there saves was, money too. And it saves money. And there was a ruling, you know, that uh, no, there's no safe level of secondhand smoke even indoors. Mm -hmm. So now we have the Clean Indoor Air Act. Mm -hmm. But we also, you know, in Vermont, especially in Montpelier, all of our parks are smoke free. The parklets that we have downtown are smoke-free, mm -hmm. and even the State House lawn, which is going to make a big difference this July 3rd when people are at the parade and watching the fireworks, that um, they won't be bothered by people smoking around them. Mm -hmm. Or it would be okay to say on the State House lawn, did you know there's no smoking on the State House lawn? Mm -hmm. So appreciate you not smoking around my family. Yeah. Well, we would like to thank you for joining us on Great. this edition. Um, that puts an end to this edition of Able Dead On Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Lauren Seiler. See you next time.